Hello everyone. If you just want the build planner for the build that you're about to see and don't want to have to hear me talk, it's down in the description, there's the link in there. Check it out. Thank you so much for stopping by, subscribe to the channel, I'll have more Last Epoch stuff and other ARPG content on my channel, I'll catch you later. Hello everyone, and welcome back. My name is Synth, and in this video I'll be going over my early build guide for the recently added mastery of Warlock. This build uses a few of the new skills, so it's the perfect fit for those who'd like to mess around with the recent additions to the game. In terms of strengths and weaknesses, the build right now has a lower damage output than my Falconer build that I did recently. I'll leave the link to that in the cards in the top right corner in case you want to check it out. Also, with this build you'll have to actively manage your mana, otherwise you'll very quickly run out. On the other hand, this build is extremely tanky, and you are constantly generating ward while being able to consistently get those values up to a thousand plus ward just mapping casually, making it extremely safe and very very viable for those who would like to start dipping the toes into hardcore in the game. On top of that, we also make use of the new defensive skill that makes you completely immune to all damage but degen effects on a very low cooldown, making it a nice new addition to the Acolyte's defensive arsenal. Without any further ado, let's move on to the details of the character. Okay, so going over our character here, as you can see, we are level 73, we are on hardcore solo account found, we have just over 1.1k HP, 40 intelligence, 4 vitality, no other stats, nearly capped on all resistances but missing quite a bit in void still, we need to work on that. And as of right now we have 268% ward retention. On our gear here, starting with our wand, it's a okay wand, it has cast speed and spell damage. The suffixes aren't that impressive. The chill on hit is good because of one of the mods on Chaos Bolts, but other than that, it's nothing that impressive. The best base that you could get, potentially, I think it's something like this. Profane Wand is quite nice, it gives us a lot more spell. In this case, specifically, spell necrotic damage, but still. I think it would be a little bit better, plus it gives us increased curse damage, which is very very good for us. On our helmet here, the base is not very good, it's fine, but uh, we'd rather have something like this base, that gives us ward decay threshold and ward gain down hit, on kill I should say. The prefixes here are quite nice, we have Fizz pen with bleed, we're doing a lot of damage through our bleed, so that's very good. And then we have that tier 5 Chaos Bolts level, which is giving us that plus 2. And spell damage, very very nice. Suffixes are fine as well. Tier 3 Fizz resistance and tier 5 lightning resistance is very nice. On our amulet, we are using a bone amulet, I love that space, it makes our resistance a lot more flexible. And this Implicits are not even maxed, they could be much much better, so very good base to work with. Here we have spell damage, increased crit strike chance, which is, we'd love that, and then two suffixes which are also very very nice. On our offhand here, we have a tier 6 spell critical strike chance, very good. And then we have a tier 5 spell damage. This base is my favorite base right now for this build. War gives us everything we want. High intelligence, ward per second, ward retention. The suffixes here are not very good, but the offensive stats on the prefixes are phenomenal. On our chest piece here, as you can see, we have a tier 6 increased health, which is giving us over 200 health. If we see here, we go from 1112 to about 900 so a lot of life from this singular mod and on top of that we have a tier 5 ward per second which is also nice the prefixes however i do not like them i don't feel like we need the bleed duration at all 
and the plus one to not not take Fisher is fine enough, but we could get this way higher, or we could have something like high tier of intelligence, which would be better. So, working on replacing this, but as of right now, this is the best chess piece I have. We talked about the wand. Going over the rings, we have both a copper ring and a gold ring. On the copper one, we have damage over time, which is not a bad mod for us. This is giving us some amount of damage. Not quite sure how much, but we do a lot of our damage through ailments, through bleed, through damned, through all the curses. There are still damage over time effects. So it's a decent enough mod to get. After that, we have increased critical strike chance, very good for us. And then two resistance, which are also quite nice. On our belt, this is without a doubt my weakest piece. It is giving me nothing but the ward decay threshold from the base, and then a decently low roll of uh, physical damage, as well as a bit of resistance. Doesn't even have four mods, so this needs to be replaced for something way better, potentially. Our gold ring here has decent-ish mods. The fire damage is actually not relevant for us, because we're doing no fire damage whatsoever. But then we got a bit of spell damage, a high tier physical resistance, and a little bit of lightning resistance as well. So, it's okay. Here on our gloves we have a tier 6, I want to say, yes, tier 6, critical strike chance, with a crit strike chance base as well, so a lot of crit coming from these gloves. As you can see, we have a 25 base spell crit chance, without this we lose 5%, so a lot of crit coming from here. And then we have a tier 5 intelligence, tier 4 hybrid life, and tier 4 poison resistance. So very good gloves here, actually. On our boots here, we have... The base is not very good, I don't like this base, but it had tier 6 movement speed, which is very good, and then we got a tier 5 intelligence, cooldown recovery speed, which is actually not relevant for us. Um, so the suffixes could use a lot of work, but it is fine for now. It does the job. I'm not wanting to craft any further on this because I want to swap this into a different base because this is not something that I want to keep for too long. And lastly here, we have also not a very good piece in the Cage Souls. It's a good enough base, I think. I've seen a, a couple of other bases that are potentially also very nice for us, but this is fine. Um, the level to transplant and profane veil are not important, but the second bit of each of those stats is actually decent. So it, it's not bad to get by any means if it comes with that already, right? We can ignore the plus levels and that would be 25 spell damage and 44 increased damage over time, which is not massive, but it's fine. And then after that we got a tier 4 void resistance, which you definitely need, and tier 4 flat health. So, quite a bit of space to improve some of these pieces, especially the wand, I'm trying to work a lot on that, because that's supposedly going to give us the most damage, right? So hopefully getting a better wand in the near future. But as you can see right now, our ward sits just short of 800 here, naturally, and obviously we generate a lot of ward while playing, as you have been able to see in the gameplay. On our amulets here, we have two amulets with increased damage over time while we have an ailment overload, which is nearly all the time. And then I have this one here with increased critical strike chance and a lot of ward per second during profane veil. So we are using profane veil, we don't have it specced here at all, however, we use it as like a means of uh, escape if we are, if you can see that we're going to get hit by a very telegraphed attack. And it's uh, quite a nice addition. And there's no other spell that I really want to add to this. So, quite nice. I really like it. 
on the remaining idols here. There's nothing very important to talk about. We have a bit of them done hit. Increase physical damage. Increase physical damage. Increase physical damage. A bit of resistance and a bit of ward retention. And that's it. On our skills here. And I have points to put in for some reason. Did I lose points here? No. No, they must have just leveled. Oh no, I took the chest piece off. So there's definitely somewhere that I lost a point and I cannot see it right now. It's fine. Oh, it was here. Okay. And here, I lost points here and here. Cool. Right. So, starting with our skills. I leveled this, by the way, using what choose your skill here it doesn't really matter i went with wandering spirits i really like leveling with that it's cooldown based but it works very well and then i changed from that once i got my mastery unlocked and i swapped into not official right away at that point you're going to have two slots already so you can potentially do that or if you want if you don't want to use wandering spirits you can do something like spirit plague which also works very well and scales nearly the same way as Nautic Fisher, so you can level with those two until you got yourself some Chaos Bolts. Eventually I swapped that however to Bone Curse. Bone Curse here is very nice. It gives us a little bit of bleed chance. This, uh, I'm just going to talk about the important notes I would say. I don't want to go over every single note because a lot of them are just very simple, like this just gives armor shred, just gives bleach chance, area, it doesn't matter, right? What matters is this one is not very important either. In fact, I might swap this out for something else. But this is very nice. This, whenever you cast it, leaves essentially a ground effect on the area that every enemy that walks into it will be afflicted by bonkers. Very, very good. And then after that we have Mark for Death on Cast, which we aren't actually having problems with from, from the sense of the mana cost, because we're not manually casting this. And we'll talk about that in a second. But this is the Bonkers 3. Or not a Fisher. The way I put points into this, I went all the way to Acid Skin first to get that extra a curse on the enemy and then I went up here to make it bleed instead of fire went into spirit gale to get three points into damned waters and then eventually came down here to send up to mines and lastly I put points into grim tide when I got the crit going on and a point here just for the extra shred of enemy necrotic resistance and the last point because this is still level 19, I'm eventually going to put here to get two stacks of bleed per second on our uh, blood gulch. On Chaos Bolts here, I've messed around a lot with this tree. The way I went about doing this was points into Damned here first, single point, going to Sanguine Reverie. One point into here to cast Rip Blood, fairly frequently actually. This turns the Necrotic into Bleed, and then points into Rip Blood, and points into another Affliction. This is how we're casting Bone Curse. It has a 6 second cooldown, but really we don't need any more than that, right? If our Bone Curse is staying around for 5 seconds, this essentially becomes a 1 second cooldown. It's plenty fine. Curse Blood is actually very, very nice. It gives us refresh on the curses on the enemies every time we hit them with a Chaos Bolt. So it makes things like Acid Skin, which only gets applied from the initial hit of our Fissure, will be, if we're still hitting the target, it will be permanently on the enemy. So that's very, very good. After that, I came all the way up here to get Call of Mordor's, turn the fire into cold, we're not scaling fire at all in this build, so I thought this was much better, because we can get this chance of snow node. 
this will give us chill chance. We don't invest a lot in his. We're creating a lot of chaos bolts, so 40% is more than enough. And on top of that, we have right now, we have chill chance on our wand as well, which we don't need, but it's still important to mention. And we have a chance to do double damage against enemies that are chilled, so that's very good. And after that, two points into this, and four points into destructive intensity. Very, very good for single target. This makes so our Chaos Bolts have an extra base of eight critical strike chance from when this is stacked, bringing it up closer to 30 something crit chance. It procs a lot, you can see that in the gameplay. It does crit all the goddamn time. Very, very good. Rip Blood in here. Very, very, very interesting. I, I actually really like this tree. So, the way I went about doing this, firstly, to, firstly one point into this, four points into this, and one point into this to get the scaling on the healing that we're getting with intelligence, all right? So if we have 40 intelligence right now, this means we are getting 40 times five, 200 increased health restored from our blood orbs. And then we come here, two points into this, one point into this, one point into this, to turn the health gained into ward instead. This also turns red blood into necrotic, which is important for something later on. But this is generating us a massive, massive, massive amount of ward through these nodes. And then on top of that, I have the blood splatter, which is not very important, but because we're not casting it ourselves, it's just a nice extra tidbit to get. And nothing else around this area really matters. 100 bleed chance. I assume this is being turned into damned chance, but I'm not entirely sure. And if it's not, if it's still bleed, it doesn't matter, because we, we also really want bleed anyway. So that's fine. Lastly, here in Transplant, we have... I... It's not that we don't need this, it's that I don't have any other skill that I care for. Profane Veil is not very good, either. I had a look at the tree and I did not like it. So I went with the... Like, there's nothing here. I really did not like this tree, unfortunately. It doesn't do anything. I don't want it to do damage, right? So I opted to not do this and instead go for transplant. But it's just a, such a boring tree, unfortunately. We get cooldown here, which is fine. We reduce the health cost and then we get bone armor, which is the more significant part of this tree. Get these three points, these two points, these three points. And everything else doesn't really matter. Haste is also nice, I suppose. Three seconds of haste, and then just fill out the points wherever you want, really. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't. This tree is so irrelevant. It, it's really not important. And yeah, those are the skills that we're using right now. Let's talk about passives then, shall we? So, for the 20 passives that you need to put in Acolyte baseline, I put 8 points right away in Forbidden Knowledge, and 8 points into Blood Aura. You can put a lot of points into Mania to get more uh, um, ward from this, which I will, will eventually do once I come around back to the here. I'll fill out this to uh, notes eventually, but still points that I want in there, right? So that's what we're doing right now. Everything else doesn't matter a lot. You can get some armor from here and vitality here, but the minion health doesn't matter after. I think these two points are very good to come back to later on, but everything else doesn't really matter. In terms of Lich and ne Necromancer, I don't really like anything here for the Necromancer. 
Everything requires minions, we're using none, right? So, I, I don't love it, personally. On the Lich, there's a few nodes that could be potentially good. Eventually, if we go into low life, which is something that I'm thinking about, well, I'll have to test a little bit. Um, but uh, I haven't committed to it yet. I'm on hardcore, right? So it's a bit scary to do like half, <laughs> half effort to low life. Um, so we'll have to see, but it's something that we might do. And there's some points here, like these are very good if we're going into low life. There's some ward granted when drop into low life. There's some necrotic damage, mana regen, as well as intelligence, right? There's a few notes here, we'll see. But our bread and butter here is the Warlock tree, of course. First and foremost, we get 5% more damage per curse on our target, so getting a lot of curses is very beneficial. And then we get a little nice buffer to some of our resistances. So, on this tree, starting with the basic nodes here, I put 5 points into Spiteful Decay, and oh, a big, big majority of our passives here you'll see have secondary threshold passives that I try to hit all the time because they're very, very good. Okay, so keep that in mind. If we're gonna invest into a point, I would recommend investing it almost always till you get to that threshold. So, five points here to get more damage over time to cursed enemies. Five points here, this is very important. Bleed Overload is very, very good for us. It makes us cast Rip Blood at up to five enemies and give us Bleed Overload after, which increases our bleed damage. And then four points into this, which means while we have Bleed Overload, we cast Rip Blood at an enemy once per second. This is making so our generation of ward from our Rip Blood is being automated and being very, very effective in what it does, keeping us at a very high amount of ward, okay? These two points are very, very important, and I recommend being the first three points that you put in, okay? After that, I went into five points into ward of malevolence. This gives us a lot of ward, gain not kill, and ward decay threshold. After that, I put five points in here for the health and armor, as well as the armor per unique curse on the enemy that is hitting us. And then I put four points into this. I don't actually have five points here. I want to eventually get the five points, but I thought getting five points into Chains of Ruin was more effective for us because our Rip Blood is actually doing necrotic damage, right? And because of that, we are able to proc them the overload which will put an extra damage dot on the enemy as well as giving us that in increased benefit of the overload effect as well as the chain which immobilizes enemies after that i put five points into here for the ashen one to get the witch fire effect which is a lot of dot damage but it doesn't stack so that's important after that, I put uh, five points into here. Actually, I didn't, I lied. I put two points into here and five points into here. Yep. Two points into here, five points into here to get the threshold effect as well. Two chain nearby enemies each second, similar to what this one does. And then eventually put three points here. Okay, for that critical multiplier with Chaotic Stripes, which is this effect. After that, I put two points into here and three points into here for getting that spell damage for curses, as well as hitting boss or rare enemy triggers Anguish, which is very good. After that, I finished this node and eventually came down here to try and get that extra mana effect, because we are decently mana expensive not on our Chaos Bolt, but Naughty Fisher is very expensive, and on a single target we're trying to get cast 3 all the time, right? So, 
that becomes very expensive very quickly. So we want effects that will give us extra mana. And that's how we went for this. Going from here, I would eventually finish this. Uh, this one I don't actually think is important to finish. Uh, but finish this one. I want to finish this as well. And I think after that, I'm actually going to go back into Backlight and get these points here. So, very, very, very good. We'll have to see how that works. This is only a 10% chance, but it goes up really, really high, right? So, when you're killing things in a map, if this scales, if we have 10 points here, this will give us 130 ward gained on nearby enemy kill. Um, for us, obviously, we don't have allies, we don't have minions, so... 130, even on a 10% chance if we procs 2 or 3 times in a pack of 20, that's, that's, that's a lot of ward that you just gained there. So yeah, this is our passives, as it is right now. Very simple, very straightforward for the most part. There's a lot of passives that make this seem very complicated, but it's really not. Our gameplay, essentially, if an enemy is here, we hit them with not a Fisher, right? Depending on your mana state, you can do maybe two, even three sometimes. And then just go and cast Chaos Bolts until it dies. Very, very simple. We use Profane Veil whenever we think we're about to get hit by, you know, a big nuke from the enemy. And okay. teleport around to do movement and try to dodge things and such. Very, very straightforward gameplay. Very, very nice. Extremely tanky right now. I don't think my health ever dipped below 80%. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the build. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye. Chill of death surrounds you. Oh. 